Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Eddie Dong from Intel Open Source Technology Center. In this session, I will talk about uh, Aircon, a big little hypervisor for IoT development. In this morning's keynotes, Yima Soso from Intel unveiled the Aircon hypervisor open source project. In this session, I will talk a, li a little bit more details. Here is the agenda. Okay, we will start from the aircon overview and then followed by the security concern in aircon side and uh, the rich ion mediation we implement in aircon uh, and why we call it bigger, little hypervisor. Okay, so what's aircon? Aircon is a big little hypervisor for IoT development. Little means like the footprint is pretty small, big means the functionality is pretty rich. Uh, as Yima mentioned in this morning's keynote, Aircon is a scalable, flexible, lightweight uh, reference hypervisor design uh, with uh, real-time uh, real behavior and uh, safety criticality in mind. So uh, let's look at the Aircon architecture. So, Aircon is a type one hypervisor running on top of bare metal uh, hardware and firmware. Aircon relies on the service VM to manage the hardware device so that Aircon itself can be very small and simple. So that uh, this is uh, particularly important for embedded ecosystem because uh, in some situations, some, uh, some usages, uh, people may require the function safety certification or, uh, or in some cases, people may want to use the different uh, uh, service OS for specific purpose, for example, uh, to run a small RTOS as a service OS. Aircon, uh, Aircon supports a prolic now, but will support more platforms soon. Uh, the, platform has, the platform has a converged security engine uh, called CSE, uh, which provides the root of trust. In firmware side, Aircon can support the, uh, the UEFI, which is widely used in PC platform, as well as the SBL Slim Boot Load uh, firmware, uh, which is usually designed for uh, latency sensitive uh, usages. Aircon hypervisor utilizes the hardware virtual technologies, uh, such as the VMX for the CPU virtualization, EPT for the memory virtualization, and uh, VTD for DMA protection. Aircon deprivates all the guests as, uh, to run in non VMX non root operation mode. This is equivalent to the kind of people usually call it as like a guest mode, uh, including the service OS. This is slightly different with uh, what Zen did in, uh, in Zen side. Uh, the service VM is called the domain zero, runs in the VMX root operation mode. Aircon created the uh, vir first virtual environment for the service OS. Uh, in service OS side, today we learn the Linux as uh, service, service OS and uh, use the, uh, the large dev native device drivers in Linux side to manage all the hardware devices so that, uh, so that service, the service OS can provide our mediator to guests. To support the more VMs, Aircon runs the uh, device, a device model in user land. It's called like Aircon device model. Uh, Aircon device model creates a virtual platform for, each, for guest uh, so that the guest can run on top. Uh, to, for, our perform, for performance consideration, Aircon also implements the so-called parallel virtualized our virtual technologies. In here, we, use, uh, we adopt the industry standard the virtual uh, specification because uh, in this way we can reuse a lot of the existing virtual drivers in today's Linux community, uh, in Linux uh, uh, source code. Uh, for performance reason, Aircon also implement uh, support the kernel uh, in kernel mediators uh, for some uh, for the performance sensitive usages. For example, the latency sensitive audio virtualization, and also like uh, for example the MPU. Uh, uh, virtualization. MPU means image processing unit. It's kind of camera driver uh, for that purpose. 
The guest in Aircon starts from the virtual SBL uh, with virtual device driver and some of the legacy device drivers. Uh, the, way the, le the guest can uh, fully reuse the existing virtual drivers and, uh, and, uh, all the way put, uh, and also the, uh, the security features like a key store and uh, includes. This is uh, particularly important in the client usages. It's not that obvious in service side, but in client side, it's very, uh, very important. Aircon device model, uh, uh, for the aircon device model, and one thing, one thing I want to highlight is that uh, for safety criti criticality reasons, we didn't use the well-known the QEMU device model because QEMU is so big. It's, I, I think it has around a couple million lines of source code. We, we, invent a brand, uh, we use a brand new device model inherited from uh, BSD. Uh, our icon uh, device model is only around like 25,000, uh, around 20 to 30 lines, uh, thousand lines of code. That's, that is very important for certification. Uh, in the meantime, Aircon uh, also uh, implemented some performance critical uh, our devices in hypervisor side, including the, the virtual peak, uh, virtual ROA peak, and the local epic and the MSI. Because as you know, like the, the interrupt controller is frequently used by the guest OS. So that, that part is performance critical and uh, we have to emulate in Aircon hypervisor itself. Okay, so in security side, uh, to support the key store and the enclaves, we actually uh, have Aircon implement a lot of additional things in uh, comparing with those server hypervisors. Uh, one is that the seed virtualization. So in all the Intel platforms with the CSE, where the CSE will provide a unique seed for OS to manage its key store, so that the OS itself can use the seed to encrypt the, key, the keys in the key store. Uh, this is a very important feature in client side. And also, uh, in, uh, in Intel platform, we have a so-called hacky hardware. It's called ha host embedded controller interface to communicate between CSE and uh, uh, host CPUs. Aircon virtualizes the hacky device driver for to provide a virtual hacky for guests so that the, uh, the, the existing key store and, the can, and includes can run on top. Today, Aircon uh, support Linux OS and Android OS. Uh, we will support more OS soon. Uh, in Android VM side, the Android VM is a little bit more, uh, is slightly different with, with traditional VM. In Android VM, there are, it's one VM with two worlds. It's called the normal world and the trusty world. Uh, the trusty world can see all the memories of normal world, but the normal world cannot. So we Aircon provide the, the, the one VM, two world concept and so that the uh, trusty OS can run in trusty world and uh, the uh, security sensitive applications can run inside the trusty. Okay. As a device hypervisor, yeah, Aircon is very small. It's only around 25,000 lines of code. Uh, that's, well, if we compare the, that with the other open source project hypervisors, for example, Zen and KVM, uh, Zen is like uh, uh, very similar, in, from architecture point of view, very similar with Aircon. Zen today has around 290,000 lines of code. That's around more than 10 times bigger than Aircon. Uh, KVM is much, more, much bigger because KVM is a type two hypervisor. It, it has to rely on band with the host OS to complete the entire virtual functionality. Uh, Aircon uses a BSD license. Uh, this is because the, uh, is to fulfill the uh, requirement of the embedded ecosystem. Because in embedded system side, many different usages requires different customization, requires different uh, uh, how it? I think there are a lot of uh, relatively small companies 
working in embedded systems, in the embedded uh, uh, system areas with different uh, prop property software, for example, even in some cases, if people may use their own hypervisors. Many, there are many hy embedded hypervisors in the world. Well, if you look at the server side, it probably is just a, just a couple, less than five <laughs> hypervisors. Okay, so we use the BSE licenses to, to help them in case uh, the customers or even the OS, o, OSVs or OEMs want to partly reuse our code. They can just use the BSD code and incorporate those code in their hypervisor or in their solution or in their uh, customized software. Aircon support security. I think one of the key consideration is that in embedded system, in many cases, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, requirement on not, not only uh, security, but also safety. So for that purpose, I think we needed to have create an environment with, very, uh, with trust environment. So we, we support the verified boot all the way to the guest, uh, so that uh, the, entire, the, the critical software can run in a safe environment. We will talk about the details later on. Uh, Aircon is big because from functionality point of view, we, we can provide almost uh, same fun even more functionalities than the server hypervisors. Aircon implement a, a bunch of new IO device drivers. So here is a list. It's not a full list, but just, I just uh, list what we are working on at the moment. Uh, for example, I think uh, if you compare with the server side, you can see like uh, IPU, IPU image processing unit is kind of a camera driver. So IPU usually is never, is never saw in the server side. Uh, TN, TSN, uh, time sensitive network, uh, this uh, in server side is not as well. Uh, TSN is mostly for audio and video. Uh, CSE, as I mentioned, this is a converged security engine. This is also a client uh, device. So we need to provide all these kind of emulations. Uh, USB, maybe is server also use that one, but different. We will talk about later on. Audio device is more a client device. Right? Uh, IOC is called IO controller. This is also a, a client device, so it's not usually not used in server side. So Aircon implement all this kind of rich IO devices for the embedded usages. Okay, now let's start uh, talk about the security side. Uh, first of all, we want to talk about the verified boot sequence. Uh, Aircon support the verified boot all the way to the guest. Uh, with different firmwares, the mechanism is slightly different, but mostly the same. So in this foil, I will talk about the uh, Aircon verified boot sequence with SPO uh, firmware. Uh, the hardware boot starts from the CSE, the converted security engine. Uh, CSE, because CSE is the root of trust. Uh, CSE will uh, measure the SBL, the slim boot loader. This is a firmware. Uh, if the measurement passes, then it will, the control will go to the SBL. SBL will initialize the hardware like a traditional firmware does, right? But then the SBL will load and verify the OS image or VMM image. In here, we are using a stitched image uh, to stitch the aircon hypervisor and service OS kernel together. So SBO will load and verify the stitched image, and once the, if the, the verification passes, then it, the control will jump to the aircon hypervisor. Aircon hypervisor will initialize the hypervisor itself, and then uh, uh, hand off the, uh, create the VM environment for the service OS and jump to the service OS kernel. So the service OS kernel will boot like a normal, like a normal Linux does. Uh, and it will start all the applications, including the device model and uh, uh, other services. Uh, one thing I need to highlight here is that uh, in Aircom boot flow, uh, all the device applications need to be uh, integration protected. So that's, uh, that can be achieved through, for example, like a DM variety to make sure all the applications we learn in the user, user land is integrated. Uh, the device model will then load the virtual SBL. 
uh, that kind of load will be also protected by the service OS uh, DM variety kind of mechanism. And the virtual SBO will uh, start to boot in guest side. And uh, uh, here we are using Android as a sample. So in Android side, the virtual SBO will load the trusty OS first, mesh the trusty OS if it, it passes, and then will jump to trusty OS. And trusty OS will do something similar to load the Android OS. Yeah, the guest side verification boot flow is completely following the guest OS mechanism itself. For example, Android is follow the Android uh, verified boot mechanism. Okay, so here is a, a, a verified boot sequence with the UEF5 firmware. Uh, mostly it's the same with that in SBO, but slightly different. In UEF5 side, because usually people using UEF5 cares about the uh, other functionalities, for example, the, the flexibility to choose the, the boot medias or like uh, uh, how to update the OS kind of thing. So we want to remain the, the existing OS uh, boot flows. Uh, the, you know, the existing OS boot flow start from the OS boot loader, right? So in, in here, we, like, like that, in SB, with SBO platform, the boot start from the CSE, but the CSE here will uh, verify the UEF fine. And once UEF fine uh, is measured and uh, is verified, and then UEF, uh, the control will go to UEF fine. UEF fine will provide the UEF fine boot time service and the runtime service. The UEF fine service itself can provide the uh, verified measurement, ver verification mechanism. So UEF1 will load the aircon, aircon EF1 uh, application and measure the aircon application. Uh, once the aircon completes the initialization and the control will go back to the uh, creator VM for, and the control go back to the service OS VM. Then the, the uh, UEF1 flow will continues and will load the OS boot loader. Uh, you, the way UEF1 to load the OS boot is following exactly how UEF1 is implement in native side. So the UEF1 will also verify the OS bootloader. Uh, and once OS, boot, OS bootloader hand the control to service OS kernel, uh, same thing, service OS kernel is also an EF1 application. So UEF1 itself will verify, load and verify the service OS kernel. Uh, service OS kernel will then load the application. That's same with that in SBO side. So service OS kernel will mesh all the, uh, will verify each application is loaded uh, using the integration protection mechanism such as DM variety. And the device model will then load the virtual SBO and the guest, the same thing with that doing SBO. Uh, the only difference is, is that in here, I think we are booting from, uh, how to say, from aircon, uh, we, we need to boot the OS bootloader and also Th those are all EF1 applications, not a law, law in which. Okay. Uh, another important security feature, as mentioned uh, uh, previ previously, uh, is called a seed virtualization. The, the Intel platform with CSE provide a unique seed. That seed is used by the OS to uh, manage its key store. In here, with virtualization, we need to provide a virtual seed to guest OS so that each guest can have their own virtual seed and manage their own key store. That virtual seed must be different because we don't want to leak the, the key store from one VM to another VM. So for that purpose, we, we provide an uh, aircon provide an seed virtualization mechanisms. We deliver virtual seed from the physical seed plus some additional information. Uh, in here, uh, to, to distinguish each VMs, we introduce so, uh, UUID for per VM. We bind an UUID with each VM's image, and uh, when the VM is launched, we, we, can, we will get the fixed UUID for that VM, and the seed virtual team can use the physical seed and the UUID together to deliver the virtual seed. In this way, uh, if the VM is restarted later on, we get the same v v virtual seed. Uh, this is exactly what the guest OS uh, expected, and that's what, what how the physical platform uh, performs. With C 
see the virtualization, the key store and uh, uh, can be maintained. Okay, hacky virtualization. Yeah, I slightly mentioned uh, previously, but uh, here we want to talk a little bit more details. Hacky is a PCIe device. It's a host embedded controller interface uh, to support the communication between the host CPU and the uh, CSE. CSE is also an MCU inside. So usually the host CPU will send, will do, when the host CPU do the uh, security sensitive operations, it will use a hacky interface to communicate with CSE and let the CSE do that for, uh, for the purpose. For example, the seed. If the, the host CPU want to access the seed, it need to go through the hacky interface. And also uh, to support a lot of different security features, for example, the manufacturing key, debug key import, all those kind of keys are managed by the CSE hardware. Uh, if host OS want to set, that, set the CSE, it needs to go through the hacky interface. So here, we need to support the seamless user environment with that of native, in native side, we need to provide a hacky virtualization. Uh, in, in, in Linux side, they are called an MEI driver, a management engine uh, interface driver, and MEI subsystem that is used to manage the entire hacky software stack. So uh, we provide a virtual hacky device to guests and implement a hack, virtual hacky front-end driver in guest side so that the guest MEI subsystem and the MEI driver can uh, ask for the hacky service through the, uh, ask for the CSE service through the hacky front-end driver. The hacky front-end driver will forward the request to the hacky back-end driver. We implement the hacky back-end driver in the device model side in the user land because usually this kind of uh, operation is at the startup time. It's not a performance critical. Usually, usually it's a one-time operation. So the device model uh, running the hacky backend service will then use the existing host OS MEI subsystem, the MEI interface, to ask, to ask the host OS to operate the real hardware, real hacky hardware through the, uh, pre the native OS driver interface. It's called a, uh, char it's a char device. Uh, th in this, this way, CSE can receive all the command. Of course. In the backend side, we may do some kind of virtualization, kind of mapping and security uh, 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 check kind of things, right? Uh, for example, uh, each VM may have a different uh, identity, so we need to make sure uh, the physical side knows, knows the command comes from which VM. Okay, so let's talk about, now let's talk about more on the virtualization side, why we say this is a big hypervisor, okay. So we started the virtualization from, uh, 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 talk st from storage virtualization because uh, even in the project side, when we start the virtualization, we start from the existing server IO. Uh, server IO. Uh, storage virtualization is very similar with that in the traditional server side. Uh, the the guest OS will have a so-called front-end driver, the storage front-end driver. Uh, when the, the guest access the block devices, the front-end driver will forward the, uh, the command to the back-end side, the back-end service side. And the back-end side, uh, using the shared ring, the back-end side will uh, inter intercept the command and the, uh, do the emulation uh, correspondingly. So in here, we will map the a host, a host disk, or a host partition, or a host file to a guest disk uh, in the backend side. So, uh, one additional feature Aircon implement is that we can Aircon can support to map from a portion of a host disk, or a portion of a host partition, or a portion of a host file to a guest disk. That's for, to provide the uh, most uh, more flexibilities. Network virtualization is also very similar with that in the service side. Uh, it's, uh, the guest will have a, a virtual network driver, and in the service OS side, we do the uh, virtual backend service by intercepting the command from guest side. 
and we re rely on the service OS side uh, network software stack to do the packet uh, classif uh, classification and the packet forwarding. Uh, in here, uh, we, we use an either virtual bridge or virtual switch to lot the packet. For the incoming packet, the packet uh, arrives in the virtual bridge first, and the virtual bridge will uh, lot the packet to the uh, corresponding VMs. Uh, same thing for the outgoing packets. Uh, this part is very similar with that in uh, traditional Zen KVM kind of things. IOC, IOC is different. IOC is a client device. It's, uh, it's called IO controller. IOC is a hardware in, in the platform used to communicate with the host CPU through UART, UART interface and control the, a lot of devices through CAN bus in the host, uh, in, in, uh, in, in the in, uh, instrument, in, uh, in vehicle instrument uh, devices. So in the virtual side, we need to provide IOC virtualization as well. So uh, one example is that IOC can be used to control the pulse life cycle of the, the, the entire system and also can be used to control, for example, air condition of the car, for example. So uh, for that purpose, the way the guest, guest IOC, uh, when the guest send an anchor, because it uses UART, so we can easily intercept the command from the guest side and uh, through the UART virtualization. In the, so in the backend service in device model side can easily chop the the uh, intercept the message from the guest OS side and do the filtering, do the in, in top, uh, checking to translate or to emulate the command. Uh, here, actually, the, in the, from real hardware point of view, the command, the IOC is a process include, probably can be ca classified into two. So one is kind of privileged command. For example, the command used to turn on the power of the entire system or turn off the power in this entire system. This kind of uh, privileged command can only be handled by the service OS itself because the service OS is a privileged VM. That method can never go to the user OS. But uh, some other method, for example, the, the uh, maybe like a turn on radio, that is an entertainment uh, component. It can, can be controlled by a user OS. So we, we need to forward that kind of uh, message to the user OS. Oh, GPU virtualization. GPU is one of the most comp complicated IO devices in modern computer system. So, Aircon do provide the GPU virtualizations, and the Aircon runs the native GPU driver in gas side uh, to, pa to pass through the performance critical but non privileged uh, operations from guest to the real hardware for performance reason. Uh, that can be, how to say, that, uh, that's the technology itself, this is well known in the, even in the server virtual inside. It's called the mediated pass-through uh, technologies. It's something between uh, full pass, uh, complete pass-through and the parallel virtualization side. So we call it the mediated pass-through. So, for performance critical resource access from guest is passed through, the, but for the privileged command access, it's chopped and, chopped and emulated. The performance of mediated pass through is usually much, much better than parallel virtualization itself. It's very close to the uh, pa uh, pass through uh, operations. So in Aircon, when the guest access to the privileged resource, the access is chopped into hypervisor first, and the hypervisor will forward the access to the device model, uh, the backend service in service OS side, so that the service OS can provide the emulation to, to generate a virtual GPU instance. Uh, that, the, the entire flow follows uh, uh, is the same with other virtual OS devices, but I think the key difference here is that we learn the native GPU driver in gas side. That's the difference between mediated pass-through and the vir uh, parallel virtualization or virtual. Uh, you have better performance, but it's not a free launch. We have to pay with the complexity of the, the solution. We, when the hardware evolves, 
the entire solution needs to evolve because the device model is, is emulating a real hardware. So the, if hardware changes, then the device model has to, to, has to change as well. Uh, audio virtualization. So uh, audio is, is also, in server side, some cases it may use audio, but typically people don't care about audio. But for an embedded system, for a client system, audio is very important. Uh, in here, uh, in Aircon, audio virtualization relies on the existing OS uh, sound uh, subsystem architecture. So in Linux, it's an advanced Linux sound architecture. It's called OSA, and the sound open uh, firmware, soft architecture. Uh, for the soft, I think uh, in the morning's keynote, uh, Ima just man, uh, talked the other one. Soft is a kind of new, new audio hardware implementation, kind of firmware implementation uh, framework. So Aircon implement, implement, uh, audio, implement audio virtualization based on both OSA and the soft. Uh, in native audio uh, system, the OSA application will invoke the OSA library to involve the kernel, and the kernel will then uh, use the soft uh, framework to involve the hardware uh, through the MPC uh, command. MPC means inter-processor communication. That's because uh, the sound hardware is another separate <coughs> processor in the system. So the, uh, the this uh, is called uh, like uh, is uh, communicated between the soft MPC driver and and the DSP platform driver. With virtualization, in the case side, we provide a virtualized uh, audio DSP device uh, and run the virtual audio device front end drivers in the case side to talk with the uh, soft MPC driver, so that when the guest application send a stream to the the, the stream will go to the front end driver. And then the front end driver will forward the packs to the, to the back end driver, uh, running in service server side. This is, and today is a, in a kernel mediator. So that one runs in the kernel side. Uh, uh, the back end, the audio back end service will then get the stream data through the, uh, in, 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 interpret, interpret the share the ring and get the data and then send the data to the real hardware, the real audio DSP device through the host side of the soft uh, architecture. This is the, this is the in, in here, right? we, the soft MPC driver will, uh, has the interface for the additional backend service to register the, its uh, APIs to, to involve. So through this way, the, the entire system uh, can, can support the audio playback. Another important device in client side is USB. So US, when we're talking about the USB, many of you probably are already aware if, if you ever try the uh, server side the USB virtualization side. So USB virtualization is not new, uh, but Aircon extends the USB virtualization to support a lot of new usages, for example, the CarPlay. Uh, in this case, for example, CarPlay, not only USB host controller, but also USB device controller are involved. So in here, we pr the USB virtualization solution uh, needed to uh, cover both the host controller virtualization and the device controller virtualization. For the host controller, ca controller air can provide a sharing among multiple VMs, and we can assign the uh, USB port to each VM, different USB port to different VM. So that means like from USB point, uh, port point of view, it's a kind of uh, dedicated access, is an assignment. But from host controller point of view, it's a shared. USB device controller is different. Device controller, uh, device is, usually it means, means it's just one device. The, the entire physical system is one device. And the device controller uh, need a kind of, uh, uh, ND kind of things. So in here, we, uh, I think we usually, when we use the device, it's just on, one VM needed to use, uh, use that device, like uh, to play the car, uh, CarPlay, to play the, uh, to, to run the CarPlay application. So we assign the XDC device to guest. This is the, uh, the, uh, the XDC driver in the guest side. 
So for that way, the device, the, the guest, can have both host, access, host control access and uh, device control access. But that's not enough. To support a car play, the USB, the USB port behavior like a USB on-the-go device. The same port needs to behave as a host controller or device controller per, per internal software control kind of things. Uh, CarPlay will configure the port to behave as a host controller or device controller at runtime. So for that purpose, we need a mechanism to control the real hardware to be behave as a host controller or device controller. In real hardware, in native side, this is controlled by the DRD driver, dual low device driver. But DRD driver, the hardware resource, the DRD driver access is usually in the XHCN host controller side. So we cannot pass through the DRD driver to guest. We have to run the DRD driver in service server side because the hardware resource is in service server side. For that purpose, we need to provide a virtual DRD uh, front-end driver to guest, so that when the guest application want to configure the port to work in device, uh, device mode, the front-end driver can forward the request to the back-end side, and the back-end side can involve the native DRD uh, uh, dri uh, driver to control. This way, we can provide the CarPlay support. OK. Oh. There are a lot of other IO mediators in developing in aircon side. Uh, and I, yeah, I don't want to talk too much today. Uh, if you are interested, please join us through the, uh, join the com aircon community. Yeah, that's all for my talk. Any yeah, questions? Ah, uh, OK, good question. So, at the moment, uh, we, we just launched the Aircon hypervisor yesterday, yesterday or the day before yesterday. So at the moment, we only support 64-bit OS uh, guest. But uh, yeah, 32-bit is in our plan. I, I guess it will come like in one or two months or something like that. Okay. Mm. Is it uh, x86-specific or do you plan to support more architectures? X, x uh, 64-bit, ah, other architectures. Uh, currently, we only have x86 64-bit uh, architecture. Something about, uh, I don't know, ARM, uh, PowerPC, MIMS. <laughs> <laughs> we would like to support it as well. <laughs> but at the moment, it's not. It's, it's just, it's very, Aircon is very young, yeah, so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you comment on what kind of safety cases you have in mind for this hypervisor? You mean the usage case? Yeah, what is the safety case you want to address with the hypervisor? Oh, the safety case to address in hyper that's very clear. For example, th this hypervisor is pretty small. It's like one-tenth of the code size. So that's for safety. Be if you depend your safety case on the service OS, it's no longer small. Uh, service OS can. It's not, it's not limited to Linux, okay? You can use whatever RTOS certified, for example, Zephyr, Zephyr, right? Or like a VxWorks. Yeah, that's, we just provide the, all the. If you're no longer talking about 30,000 lines of code, if you're talking about 100,000 lines of code, 100,000 lines of code. Yeah, but. Uh, you're no easily safety certified. Yeah, but uh, for example, VxWorks is already certi safety certificated, so. Uh, still a lot of uh, uh, work, yeah, I agree. But uh, anyway, it's uh, comparing with existing server hypervisor, this one is much simplified. Hmm? Please. How do you deal with hardware failures? Hardware failures, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think I can, I can say something. So, Actually, one of the uh, requirements of the uh, certification is to handle the hardware failure, so-called uh, failure uh, fault module. This is the basic architecture. Besides this one, we need to add a lot of the kind of failure processing. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, 
it's so young, <laughs> so at the moment it doesn't have this one, but the architecture itself opens the door for this kind of uh, things to add on. Uh, so, so you mean the 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 GPU rendering fa failure, right? The so in yes, GPU sometimes may. Okay, so so he is saying like the the GPU application if running the i nine fifteen driver, in some cases may trigger the hardware failure. It's uh, yeah, I understand that in native side that kind of case may happen as well. This is mostly for the rendering command because if the, the command used to uh, uh, submit to the GPU is too complicated or for some cases the trigger uh, some software bug or hardware bug, the GPU may harm. That's true. So in native side, how is this the problem solved? I think that today the solution is that the hardware will provide a timeout mechanisms. Once the timeout is detected, the, the driver will reset the hardware. In our case, for safety critical uh, safety reason, if the the failure uh, comes from the guest, we we can like uh, stop the uh, reset the engine working for the guest at the moment. But in service OS side, assuming if the safety application runs in service OS side or runs in a separate VM, in that case we need to isolate them, right? So that's. Uh, I think first one to report the failure today we can do that because <laughs> time out mechanism can be used here. But to recover from the failure, there are a lot of uh, things to do. Uh, from certification point of view, what we are seeing is typical solution to the hardware failure is to reboot, so called watch time dog. Uh, uh, watch time dog, yeah. Memory leakage. This is if if the hypervisor can use the EPT to protect the if hypervisor don't have bug then EPT can solve the problem right but if if hypervisor has bug that's another story. So yeah so suppose the certification process will do that kind of code sanity kind of things of course even. Sanity the code is not 100% correct. It may have a bug as well. Yeah. But uh, that, that's at least uh, from engineering point of view, we can have a way to do that, try to yeah, use EPT to protect. Yes, pass through devices, but uh, sorry, I forgot to mention. Yes, that's one of the key features. Right? That, that's, yeah, that's the same with that in server side, we do support the pass through. Actually, uh, for the embedded systems, it's more challenging to support the pass through because uh, embedded system is usually very small, and all the devices are in the SLC side. The SLC design is slightly different with server. Server side, the device is a PCIe separate, the separate card. So that card, the driver and the card itself will, uh, how to say, is, kind of self-content, it will never assume what kind of resource it can access beyond the card itself. But in the SLC side, it's slightly different because SLC put everything together. So there may have some, time of inter, uh, some kind of interdependency. We do, we do support the device pass-through. And uh, yeah, I think that's the one of the key features as well. Any more questions? Okay.